sure we have the right people on the bus. Team chemistry, very important to him, and that really came through after UNO rallied from a double-digit deficit in the second half yesterday, forcing two overtimes as the Cowboys pulled away for the 10-point win. Cowboys in their home. Whites get the opening tip, and we're underway from here in Katy. Zach Scott, quick shot from the wing, and it falls. That's for three for the junior from Miami, Florida. And that was a comfortable looking shot there. No wasting around on the offensive end by the Cowboys. And that's a little bit of what they did yesterday as well. Same starting fives for both squads as their wins yesterday. Here is Gus Okafor, as you mentioned, a huge game from beyond the York, misfiring on his first attempt here. And Brendan Medley Bacon got the tip. 7-1 center for McNeese. Miles Lewis. Offensive board into the hands of Kellen Taylor. Here's Colin Warren. And Oka for a nice job knocking it off of Medley Bacon at Southeastern Basketball. Right, you see both these teams very active on the defensive end. Cowboys looking to try to push the tempo just a little bit, but good transition defense by the Lions to get back. And here we go offensively for the Lions. Could it be an impact for the Cowboys going to double overtime just yesterday in this one tonight? Jalen Hinton in and out over Medley Bacon. Warren inside finds Lewis. Yeah, that's pretty. And anytime you can do that, you can always keep your eyes up, keep the assist up. Good look there to Cullen Warren. Quick shot from the corner. Ryan Burkhart, his 33rd three on the season. Yeah, he was three of five yesterday against Houston Baptist beyond the three point line. And that's a good side. If they can get him feeling that early, that's another weapon. Lewis, the ball knocked away initially by Claire Joe. Had to dive on the floor for it. Lewis and Claire Joe had to be separated. And I believe we have a foul called on the floor. Oh. You know, it's again, on I ask myself again. <laughs> I tell people, yeah, these games don't count, but you're not going to tell these players that. <laughs> this effort right now. It's high energy, people dying on the, diving on the floor to get the ball. And the tension is certainly high to start this game out, Dave. Last time these two teams met was here in March in the conference tournament. Foul on the shot, and free throws coming for Kellen Taylor. Yeah, that's a good take there. Uh, Hinton got himself a little bit in trouble. He didn't use that baseline uh, like you probably should as an extra defender, but that's good dribble penetration again by Taylor to at least get to the free throw line. Both these teams, two of many examples in the league of having to gel together with transfers. Kellen Taylor, grad transfer from the University of Albany, former great team. He's from Landover, Maryland. Nine and a half points a game, makes one of two. Hinton transfer from Florida Southern. The inside feed knocked away by Taylor. This is Southeastern's 10th straight game away from Hammond. Cancellation at home, forcing what was a longer road trip than anticipated. They didn't have a scheduled six game trip late last year. Off the miss, here comes Claire Joe for Southeastern. It's to the rim, the pretty finish with the left hand. Yeah, both of these clubs can certainly run the floor, but Claire Joe there getting out in front. Got a little contact, still had the strength, David, to finish at the rim. From behind, Roscoe Eastman had the tip and then the whistle. Foul called on Warren. Yeah, these types of games, they have the athleticism, they have the speed, so anytime you can get numbers, you've got enough athletes to get to the rim. Like you see Claire Joe there. Cowboys have come up up tempo at times offensively, coming off that double overtime win yesterday. How much can they afford for 40 minutes to play with such high energy? Yeah, I think that's a good question. We're going to find out. We're going to see how good condition they are, how long their legs, and how deep their bench can help them out. There's a lot of contact there. 
Oh, more chippiness as Taylor bumped Okafor, and then Okafor continued his drive and bumped into Taylor. You got to think about it, David. This is a rivalry kind of game. This this is all sports. It, it just isn't here today. But you know, you, you look at football, you look at baseball, you look at all the sports, and here today, you know, these two teams want to go and advance and try to play and be champions of this tournament. So you're going to see the best of the best right now. They're going to put their best foot forward. 117th meeting all time between these two squads and whistles are starting to blow here. I think our officiating crew of Darren George Kirby sitting Henry Howard they see how chippy it's getting early. I don't think they're going to hesitate to blow the whistle on contact. That's another McNeese foul. This one on Medley Bacon is first. Roscoe Eastman with the basketball just at 5-9. Started with the team late just his fourth game of the year. Open three off the mark by Claire Joe. Kellen Taylor finds Medley Bacon. You don't see a lot of 7 1 big men in the Southland, and Medley Bacon, even with that size, able to move down the floor well. well. What a luxury it is for his size to be able to get up and down the floor. You know, he's, he's, he's like a center, but he also plays like a small forward with his athleticism. He's able to be rangy and. And a good defender underneath the rim, too. Eastman, just six points in his three games, and that's his first three-pointer of the season. And that's a confident stroke. And anytime you can get some of these other players involved, and it doesn't always have to be Yoka for. You know, it doesn't have to put, uh, like, all Southland Conference foes, don't let the record fool you. A lot of road games guarantee games. That money helps, of course, uh, fund these programs. But all the coaches we talked to leading into this week, so excited that they get to play like opponents, even if it is teams that they'll play later on twice that count towards the conference standings. There's Trey English, freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, off the bench. Medley Bacon still on the floor with the basketball now. Trying to move in on Hinton. He'll go to the line. Well, you see all the attention. When he gets the ball on that elbow, or just a little bit above the elbow, he's going to draw a double team. But he's so crafty with the ball that even though he can still get his shot off, he's still looking to pass. And you saw there, he still is able to draw the foul and get to the free throw line. Junior from Baltimore, Maryland. Played at VCU last season. And before that, Coppin State, where he was third team all MEAC in 2019. John Hicken calls him a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, he is. Just because it's so different than really any player you're going to see in the league this season, already making an impact early tonight. Drains both free throws. Well, you know, he, he's 7 1, but it, it doesn't look like a awkward 7 1. He, he, he looks just, just light on his feet, can quickly guard anybody on the floor. Antonio Gordon misfires. English the board. Once again, McNeese in transition. Taylor shuffled his feet before putting the ball on the floor to travel. Yeah, he kind of got himself in trouble a little bit, just wanted to try to put the brakes on at the same time and do a jump move to the hoop. And you can see right there, hey, the Cowboys are not resting <laughs> by any means. When they get the rebound, they are looking to push and go back the other way. Both coaches telling us, even with the rugged non-conference schedules that they've had to face, their teams have kept on competing. I really like the chemistry that these two teams are building. Eastman, second three, his first two of the year. That extra pass, you will be rewarded every single time just about, David. If you can make that extra pass, get it to a shooter, good things tend to happen. First lead for the Lions in the early go. English, charge. Gordon draws the charge. You know, it's all about ball movement. You got dribble penetration, defense blocks it out, but you do an X pass across the court, swing it back to a wide open shooter. It's the unselfish play, David. We've seen it a couple of times already in this tournament. It will reward you. Big shot there for the Lions. Good pass. Inside the dunk by Okafor. Eastman gets the assist. Hey, Eastman has come in and done a nice job keeping things facilitating. He's up tempo. He's making shots. He's looking for open teammates. And the defensive pressure now, Dave. 
gets called for the foul, but look at his teammates come up yeah. to him, still loving the intensity and playing up on Trey English, even though he's called for the region. You know, you, you got to love these guys, right? It, it, it's not a huge, huge crowd in the building, but they are playing the game on the court because it means something to them. And they're going after each other, and you see the camaraderie. You see each one pulling for each other there as Eastman getting some love from his teammate. Winner in the title game tomorrow night. It's either Nichols or AM Corpus Christi that comes up later tonight here. Here's Christian Shoemate on the floor. Star for the Cowboys yesterday in their double overtime win. And right off the bat, two and a foul. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> that's that's outstanding work right there. And you know what? I, I'm so impressed with these guys. 6'6, six, 6'7, six, six, seven, six, eight. They, they have post-skill moves down on the block, but they still are able to knock down a three-point shot and shoot it coming right in, right on cue, as he's done yesterday. They can get the back end of that uh, and one there, but that's a big bucket nonetheless. A 21 points, 13 boards in the double overtime win over UNO. Good job there by Trey English to cut off that dribble penetration. This is smart here by Okafor to, hey, see if you can post up the smaller player. He's got seven inches on English. Instead, down the baseline goes Claire Joe and a bump. Yeah, Francois didn't need his feet on that one. Arwen Francois first. 16 fouls already. We already have 11 fouls, but that doesn't match the physicality we've seen so far. Another player on the floor, Gordon, wanted a foul on Francois for pushing him. You know, this is the kind of effort, David, that you see in March. You know, teams trying to get into the tournament, trying to make the Southland Conference tournament itself, maybe even get to the NCAA double tournament. Now Okafor had the six-footer English on him before. That time takes the 7-1 Medley Bacon to the rim. Well, he, he's, he's got the body. He, he's athletic enough that he can match up against most bigger players. And if he's got a smaller player, he's just going to rise up and, and do an easy lay-in like he did there. She made on up in the air, finds English. That's a tough cover right here for Okafor. He's up against Bacon. That's a... Six to shoot. English double to Bentley Bacon. Foul. Yeah, that's pretty good basketball there. The Cowboys kind of got a little bit in a desperation mode, but anytime the shot clock is winding down, dump it inside to your big guy. Here it is again. Watch the attention. He's matched up against Okafor. Kick it back out. Here's the desperation of the shot clock winding down. Get it to your big guy. He will make things happen. They have to foul him. Put him on the line here. Now that's the second foul on Claire Joe. Southeastern's leading assist man. Second leading score. He comes out. And Okafor comes out as well. So the depth of this Lions team tested early. They're out. Or they're without Joe Kaspersik. Averaging eight and a half points a game. Both these teams almost 100% healthy here on this one today. That one's got to be better shooting free throws this game. They were 52% yesterday. Burkhart yeah. off the assist from Nick Caldwell. Yeah, that's his spot. That, that's his spot. If you watch him during warm-ups, he went to both of the sides of the corners, and he was knocking down that shot right there. So that's a good sign again if he's starting to feel it here early in the game. Four threes already for the Lions in under eight minutes. Caldwell gets the tip. Outlet to Eastman. That's a good job closing out on shooter. Shoemate identifying another shooter, closing it out so he couldn't raise up. Eastman shuffled. A dividends not only in this in this tournament, but it can also pay off for the rest of the season. Some pressure by the Lions and the errant throw from Warren, a turnover. Yeah, it was there too. Good thought. Just couldn't execute it there. That is the sixth McNeese turnover already. Two for the Lions. He's been misfires this time. Another turnover. Eastman gets the theft. 
follow off the mark after oh, no. the Eastman miss by Gordon. And here come the Cowboys. Lewis to the rim. Foul. And they're going to count the bucket as well, a goal 10. Yeah, these two teams can flat out, get up and down the court, and it's unfortunate too for the Lions because I think right here, Eastman, you know, he's anticipating the bigger defender to come in and block, but then you had a putback by his teammate that just didn't go down. And when you give a little crack to either one of these teams, it's going back the other way. And you see how quickly the Cowboys can get up the court. Now Lewis is shooting free throws. Lewis, the double-double yesterday in the win over UNO, 19 points, 12 rebounds. Transfer from VMI, completes the three-point play. David, he played a lot of minutes. He, 41 minutes in that game last night. Mm -hmm. That there was really a five-point turnaround because of the miss by Southeastern on the break. There are two misses. Okafor back on the floor. Caldwell for three. Got it. Fifth three for the Lions already. Yeah, that's pretty. You know, he's another one of these spot-up shooters that when you give him a little crease, he's going to knock it down. Kellen Taylor backs in on Caldwell. Unable to finish. Caldwell, no foul as he goes to the floor, but saves it to Okafor. Eastman got the step on his defender, but throws it into the hands of Lewis. Yeah, he probably could have kept going all the way to the rim. I, I, I know Bentley Bacon was down there, but probably could have called the foul. Scott misfires. Taylor for two. And, and that's where Taylor is such a nice addition to this team. And, you know, he's 6'6", 215. He can play in the inside. He's wide enough and got enough explosiveness to get to the rest. This, this time he's been challenged. Bentley Bacon off the mark. Here comes Scott. Cuts the deficit to one. That's a nice job, real nice job. Push the basketball, let somebody pick you up. If nobody can pick you up, look for a passer. If not, hey, see if you can knock down the mid-range jump. Despite seven turnovers, Cowboys down five a moment ago. But a 6-2 run to get him to within one. That way they can guard to Caldwell. Spin with a right hand, he'll go to the line. Nice move, very nice move. That's a, when you watch him, David, in pregame warm-ups, he was working on that move right there. The coaches would pass in the ball. He would work with the defender on his left side or right side. He spin to the middle of the lane, still able to get a shot off and draw the foul. So Nick Caldwell, sophomore from Prairieville, Louisiana. Just three of 10 from the line this season. Five and a half points a game. <laughs> That stroke, I'm surprised it's three of 10. He calmly drains the first one. Well, coming into the tournament, he was only 45% shooting from the floor. And I say only, didn't play many minutes. He was only averaging 16 minutes a game, 25% three-point shooter from the floor, but uh, from beyond the arc. But he, he's got enough that, you know, Coach Kiefer can make a decision. Hey, if I need to go deep to my bench, if I need a spark, if I need a shooter, a spot-up shooter on the floor, that's going to open up the court for some of these other guys also. Look good on those two. Puts his team up three. Matthew Strange guards Scott. Chance for the Cowboys to tie with the three. Gage Larvadine guards Taylor. Six on the shot clock. Medley Bacon triple. Now for the tie, Taylor. Short. Offensive board, Massey will go to the line. And that front court of the Cowboys is long and, and they're athletic. You know, they've got Massey now in the game. He's 6'5. When they do have Colin Warner, who's also a guard, you know, he's 6'4. Miles Lewis is 6'5. But, you know, they, they play bigger than what their height indicates, and they're so physical and athletic. At any loose ball, they're going to have a chance to go up and try to get it. is from here in Houston. Played his high school ball at Legacy. Career high seven boards. And the win over UNO yesterday added eight points. She made checks back in, yet to get going. Two points so far after his 21 point effort yesterday in the win over the Privateers. Massey missed them both. 
Now with mentally Bacon out of the game, the Cowboys have gone a little bit smaller. And so now you're going to see kind of a nice matchup in favor of the Lions. Cole will get the step on Taylor to a wide open Larva game, but a charge underneath. It was Scott trying the charge on the pass off. This is Francois' second foul. Well, let's take a look at this. Was he? Who? I don't know. <laughs> you can see just a little bit of movement, but I understand the call for sure. An apology, second foul on Caldwell, who goes to the bench. Game is now slowed down after both teams came out of the gate firing. Yeah, and, and the Lions have gone to a more of a zone, 2-3 zone defense, too. Nice pass, Massey to Taylor, and another foul. Yeah, I mean, good ball movement there. And, and part of that, David, slowing it down, they recognize what the Lions are doing defensively. They've gone to a 2-3 zone. Okay, now we need to work it around, try to find an open shot. We don't have Bentley bank, Bacon in the inside. We can't dump it in there. So it's dribble penetration, pass it around, find an open look, get to the free throw line. Four Lions now have two fouls. Clergio, Gordon, Caldwell, and Hinton. And the Cowboys are in the double bonus with 8.24 to go. Hinton does check in as Taylor drains both free throws. Sergio and Okafor both on the floor now for the Lions. Approaching eight minutes to go, first half. Winner gets either Nichols or AM and Corpus Christi in the title game tomorrow night. Matthew Strange, that's what he does. He's 17 of 29 from beyond the arc, and he'll take that lucky roll. That was a beautiful job of doing the pump fake, doing a sidestep, squaring his shoulders, and knocking down a three ball. Shoemate got a point away by Larbadin. Here comes Clergio. Challenges Scott and scores. That's what he can do. That's how he can really impact the team, impact this game, because he can go coast to coast. And just like that, the Lions have their biggest lead. Uh, the defensive intensity on this end has picked up for the Lions for sure, but that's a big time shot. Francois answers. Is 28-3 to lead the Cowboys, and it really felt like McNeese needed that. To slow down the Lions' momentum, cutting the deficit in half. Pass punch by Taylor. Hinton saves. Oh, Larbadane hangs in the air and scores. The star football player is a freshman for Southeastern at wideout, one of the best returners in the league. How about a hang up in the air and finish? Not bad, right? We, we know he's not afraid of contact. <laughs> so he goes in there with the trees. It's his body in great position to, to knock you down. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he challenges Bentley Bacon later. <laughs> he almost got the board. You bring up a good point when you add the performance yesterday. They're 22 of 34 yeah. from beyond the arc so far here in Katy. That's impressive. I'd be happy to come back here in a couple of months <laughs> for the conference tournament. <laughs> These games do not count towards the conference standings. It's been great to see the competitiveness of all these squads. Yeah, they don't care that there's a game tomorrow also. Well, look at this, Dave. We got a little full court pick up here, a little full court press. Coach Keith for trying to switch it up. That's that's with all those good coaches, those great coaches. They always try to keep the other team off balance. You just never know. Now they're going to the trap. Ellie Bacon back on the floor with it. Another turnover for the Cowboys. That's their ninth. Scott called for the walk. You know, and you, you can hear the energy from the Lions bench as they're rooting their guys on to put pressure, pressure defense, trap, get a turnover, and that's exactly what happens. Even Coach Kiefer's over there. He's one of the main guys lead to charge, too. David Kiefer tells us that every day he says we have to work on being connected on both ends of the floor. So we talked about the three-point shooting and then forcing nine turnovers so far. That's been done. 
And a bump on the Eastman drive. It'll be free throws as English picks up his second. It's always a benefit when you've got some guards. Guards that can handle the ball, guards that are looking to create not only their own shot, but when they go in and draw some traffic, they're, they're, a, they're able to still pass the ball, David. And I, I really like what Eastman has done. He is looking to score. He's looking to put pressure on that defense. And it's a tough, tough cover there as Trey English gets called for the foul. This is a Southeastern team that took Tulane to the buzzer in the season opener, lost 70 to 67. It's a Green Wave squad that's defeated Memphis and Cincinnati, almost defeated East Carolina. They're close to being 3-0 in the American. One at Troy on December the 5th. They're 5-9, like so many Southland teams again, just such a, a rugged non-conference slate on the road. They've gone to Louisville, Iowa State, Iowa. And here in Katy, their biggest lead right now over McNeese at 9 after the free throws. Charging call. That's another Cowboys turnover. What a job defensively by Southeastern so far. Caldwell draws this charge. Yeah, they're doing a great job on Shoemake, but they are doing collectively a great job of doing this right here. Move your feet and good things happen. He, he was there just long enough to draw the contact. Good call there by the official. The Shoemake certainly draw the uh, start of the contact for sure. Talked about how David Kiefer says his team's working on being connected and tells us every day we're understanding each other a little better what they want to do identity-wise on both ends of the floor. Okafor has put the Lions up by 11. Yeah, well, that's one guy you, you cannot leave unguarded for sure. He probably could have stayed back and shot the three, but felt better coming into that mid-range. Almost a steal there. It's interesting. John Aikens letting his team play this out. The Cowboys are struggling. He watched that last possession, arms crossed. Still has all his timeouts. An eight nothing run by Southeastern. He wants his team to play through it, much like Southeastern. A lot of new pieces trying to gel together. Double on Medley Bacon right away. Seven to shoot. Massey, nice finish. Yeah, that's nice. That, that's real nice. That's, that's how you kind of quiet the pressure of a defense. You take it right in the heart of the defense. That's a great job. Lions put up 90 in the win over HBU yesterday. On pace to eclipse that so far. Caldwell. Saves it to Burkhart. Six to shoot. Burkhart fires. Got it. Yeah, he's a shooter. Pure shooter. At this pace, I know Southeastern traveled a bunch. David Kiefer may win all his home conference games here. <laughs> the way they're shooting from three. They're up to seven for ten now today. 16 to 25 yesterday. Eastman got his hand to the ball. Shoemate saves. Scott looks to answer and does. That's big. That is big time shooting there. The little helter skelter. You're just trying to find something and knocking down that shot there is huge. Larvardane left wide open. He connects. Why not? A star in high school at Riverside Academy mentioned his football prowess. Helping we, Southeastern to the playoffs, <laughs> and here he is on the floor draining long range jumpers. It's so funny, you know, in the football, we talk about how good a basketball player he is, but now here it is in basketball, we got to talk about how good a football player he is. <laughs> Lewis to the rim. Oh, it's on the rim! making out the tip. Lions wanted offensive basket interference, no whistle. Yeah, you see it pick right back up. It's going back and forth. You mentioned kind of some runs each team kind of had. Now you're starting to see these two teams throw some blows at one another. The defensive intensity still at a high level. Another three, another make. Can't leave him open. You gotta identify the shooters. They've hit seven of their last eight shots. Massey can't answer. Southeastern is 9 of 12 from beyond the arc now. 65% shooting total. How about Okafor? 
that was challenged by the 7-1 medley bacon. He kind of felt like, hey, let me join this party here from the three ball. Beautiful spin by Massey in the finish for the freshman from here in Houston. They got two guys, so you know, either neither one of these teams are going to run too far away from one another because they have too many good players that can get their own shot. And you saw how Massey quickly got back on the other end to get him two. Teams they've had, they, they played in a tournament in Florida, then went cross country, played Seattle and Wyoming. So despite the losses, still brought us closer. Oh, well, wow! How about that play out of the timeout? Okafor left open and the easy dunk. That was beautiful execution. How awesome is that? You know, break, you call up your timeout, and you get the bucket with the alley oop. Okafor just picked up his first. 25 points yesterday for Okafor, most of them from beyond the arc. And then they left him alone coming around the screen for the dunk off the out of bounds lob. And Kellen Taylor at the line for McNeese. Here, John Aiken, what do you think you told your team during the timeout? Because you're playing a pun an opponent that's red hot right now. Well, I think you got to understand offensively, we can't panic. Make clear passes, clean passes, because right now the lines are overplaying the passing lanes. And if you have a lane, and if you're one-on-one, -on -one, hey, let's go to the basket, because we're athletic enough. We can we can get to the rim, make them foul us, and sometimes we can get an and one. I, I think you just got to settle yourself down just a little bit. Hinton wanted to get it to Strange, and that's how it's gone. The lucky oh bounce in the open three, and Burkhardt has been red hot. His fifth three of the half. Yeah, that's when you, as a shooter, David, that rim starts to look like a big old swimming pool out there. You feel like you can hit it anywhere from anywhere on the court. He's five of five from beyond the arc, and then the Lions forced the 11th Cowboy turnover. So the Lions are going to face a similar situation to yesterday. They led HBU by 20 in the second half. Huskies roared back, made it a two-possession game late. Here the Lions up 14 with a minute to go before halftime. Okafor posting up on the smaller Massey. It takes him to the rim, unable to finish, however. Lewis moves on Burkhardt and scores. Yeah, that's nice. Good job there. You know, it's all part of annoying the situation in the game. You can get a quick bucket right here. You might get a two for one. You can get a stop here. Keon Clergio, a quiet first half, hasn't mattered. Just four points. Burkhart wants another one. Six for six get from the end. Get out of town. He can't miss. He got 132 effort by this entire team, and they physically can match up with anybody else in the conference. And the way they shoot, that is going to be a tough, tough team to put out for sure in this tournament. Time winding down. Taylor inside. One second, and Taylor connects. 71% as a team shooting three-pointers. How about the turnovers? Plus seven for Southeastern, and then also plus seven in points off turnovers. Second half underway. Lions with the basketball. And Cleon Clergio finds a cutting Jalen Hinton as the hot offense continues for the team in black. Yeah, Coach Aiken, you know, I agree with them. I, I thought the defensive effort was there. I, I just think the Lions are just playing just a step better. And that play right there with Claire Joe dishing it out was a microcosm of really what the whole game has been so far. Zach Scott just fires from three. This is the Lions' biggest lead. And with the basketball, Roscoe Eastman, the hot first half himself with a couple of threes. Reaching call in the backcourt. Colin Warren picks up a second foul. Well, this is how they're going to get back into the game. Now, Warren, that is a foul, but sometimes you're, you're going to get those fouls when you want to be aggressive. We saw the Lions kind of tilt the tilt a little bit, tilt the tide by being aggressive. They got some early fouls, but then they started to get into a defensive lather. That's what the Cowboys are going to have to do in this second half. Eastman by Medley Bacon, who gets the block, but a goaltending call. Man, I thought that was on the way up. That's the 5'9", Roscoe Wiesman giving up 16 inches to Medley Bacon, but the quick step to the rim gives him the two. And Eastman is scrappy, isn't he? And he just finds a way to just break down the defense to get to that, and that's a good shot there by Warren. Let's see if Colin Warren can get going. His first two points from here in Houston went to nearby Elkins High School, averaging nine points a game.
see Coach Aiken telling his guys, come on on the defensive end, come on. No help, and Clergio just fires from the paint open, but off the mark too long. Lewis challenges Clergio and a charge. Boy, they are so good, David, at that right there. So good at moving your feet. Young players at home, watch how the Lions move his feet. Watch Claire Joe. He's going to beat him to the spot. That's the key. If you can beat the dribble penetration to the spot and set just for a millisecond, nine out of ten times, you're going to get that charge in your favor. Lewis, McNeese's leading scorer, just picked up his third foul, and so he goes to the bench. Good tip of the pass, Taylor. Cowboys need a lot more of that. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's where you got to get it going. And you see the intensity. Now they're picking up the ball full court now. Not necessarily a full court press, but they're just trying to slow the tip, the tempo of this offense down. Taylor the bump called for his second foul. You can always play defense, David. You can always, if you hustle. Good things tend to happen. Here it is. Nice finish at the rim. Claire Joe inside. Another pass to a cutting Kenton. Instead of a dunk, it'll be free throws. Did you see how long he hung in the air? <laughs> he just, he just kind of hung in the air. And no, oh, by the way, I'm going to get fouled. And on my way down, I'm just going to flip it up. And it almost goes in. But he's easily their leader in blocks with 28 yeah. coming into this game. And, and that's why he's at 6'6", 200, not necessarily a big man. Well, when you see those guys that are 6'6", and they're shot blockers, that just means he can jump and probably jump out of this gym. And he literally can jump. It feels like he could jump out of this gym. And, and that's a nice job there knocking down those free throws. Lead back up to 14. Cowboys team averaging 76 points a game. Looks like they'll need to eclipse that mark and then some if they want to come back. Taylor, late whistle, okay. foul. I like that. I like that a lot. Taylor using his size, using his ability. He's got nice skill down there around that elbow. And if, if they can't get the ball inside to Medley Bacon, this is a nice alternative because of his big, wide body and his ability to, to get the ball up. Just a 55% free throw shooter off the mark on the first. Hinton just picked up his third foul. David Kiefer will keep him in. Okay, they're going to pick up after a made shot. Racing by Warren and then Massey with the tip. It's taken away by Scott. That's just the six Lions turnover. Warren to the oh. rim, too long. Cowboys can't afford to miss too many of those trying to come back from 13 down. That's the Lions team still shooting 63% from the floor. It goes a little two man game here. There, Joe and Okafor at the top of the key. Clergio pulls up. Still a quiet game for Keon Clergio. Four points. Adley Bacon moves in on Okafor. Hinton had the ball in his hands for a moment. Tipped out of bounds, though, to the Cowboys. It was Medley Bacon knocking the ball away from Hinton. And it means a fresh 20 for the Cowboys. Now, that was, uh, he was awfully close. Uh, you know, Medley Bacon, he. That was his spot. Shot just didn't go down. Come on, get this. Taylor. Yes, sir. Two misses from close range the last minute for McNeese. I think that's what they wanted. If they want to get a quick shot, I think that's one of the better alternatives you could get. Once again, Baldi go to Hoover. Got to close out on over for you cannot give him any room. He will step back and shoot it. What a smart move. Saw the double coming, but kept his dribble. And when the double backed off, he kept going to the hoop and draws the foul. You know, he's, he's a dangerous player to guard because 
he can step back from right here at the three-point line. So you you kind of got to get up on him. But when you get up on him, David, he can go around you. And then just the craftiness. You know, I use the word craftiness because it is kind of crafty. When you're down there amongst a bunch of bodies, you can't take a step. You got to know how to use that pivot. And Okafor is one of the better players in this conference, certainly do that. 7 of 10 from beyond the arc yesterday. 0 of 2 today. But free throw will still put him in double figures. Be the third foul on Taylor who comes out. Lead up to 15 for Southeastern. Will McNeese got to go because if Okafor starts to feel it, now, now you're in trouble because they're going to have three lethal scorers on the Lions' side. Cowboys two of six from the floor this half. They can step up and pull off the comeback here. He does have great young dudes. These, these guys have a lot of potential. And right now, you know, they're just playing a Lions team that's red hot. And they've got to figure a way to chip away at this lead. And I think the guy with the ball right now is the way to do it. The swat by Hinton off Medley Bacon. The shot clock at four. And Warren scores. Yeah, there he is again. Warren just seems to pick them up when they need it. If it wasn't Warren, it was either Zach Scott in that first half. Cowboys to come back has to start at the defensive end, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I really do. They, they, they've got to really anticipate these passing lanes and try to get a steal, try to be aggressive. Hinton wanted to challenge Medley Bacon. Instead, backs it out to Eastman. Five on the shot clock. Claire Joe in and out from the corner. Well, David, there's your answer. That's a little bit of a better defensive side there, but then you get the turnover right away, and that's a good look, but the pass just off the mark. 13th Cowboys turnover. They had 10 in the first half. John Aiken knew his team had an opportunity there to get it to within 11 in transition. You know, you got to continue to pressure down here. They've had you know, several defensive good looks, several defensive stops, but just have not been able to get away with it. And when you do that, you keep giving the Alliance offense opportunities, and Okafor is going to knock a three ball down sooner or later. That's Okafor's first three, and David Kiefer told us as he was going into the halftime locker room, he said he's so happy with how his team has been distributing the basketball as Medley Bacon draws the foul. That's 15 assists on 21 makes for the Lions now. You know, like I said, it, you know, Okafor hadn't really felt a shot just yet. And I'm telling you, he, he's going to start to get a little bit more confident. Going to start going out and saying, OK, it's it's my time now to close this thing out. And he's that type of player. Taylor up the inbounds, connects. Good shot. Quietly, he is up to 14 points to lead the Cowboys, but three Lions in double figures, including Ryan Burkhardt, who had 17 in the first half, and he's on the floor now for Southeastern. Pressure on Claire Joe and a foul. I think that's fine. I think they can live with those types of fouls if, if the pressure is certainly there. You know, it's a, it's a give and take kind of thing. You're, you're going to pressure. You may get called for a foul, but you also may get a loose ball. They may get a turn over the other way. Jimmy didn't like the Kirby second call, but he picks up a second foul. Six minutes into the second half. Winner gets Nichols or AM Corpus Christi. That tip at approximately 7.30 Central. That's a tough guard by Massey. Okafor followed up a shot, but it goes over him and into the hands of Taylor. Scott. Deficit down to 12. Yeah, he, he's good at that. In, in transition, you know, fast break kind of thing. He can catch it and try to knock it down. And I tell you, neither one of these teams I thought were going to get too far away from one another. I know it was a 13-point lead a while ago. But these two teams are too good. They're, they're too good, especially on the defensive end on both sides. And they have enough scorers that they can make this thing interesting. Strain. Oh, man. Skying from the weak side and dunking it down. This is all about not blocking out. And watch the follow there. That's a thing of beauty. He times it perfectly and just elevates, and there's nothing anybody can do about that. Well, you said at some point he's going to get rolling. He's up to 16. He already has eight points this half. 
And his team is back up 15. Yeah, it, it was just quiet. You know, he, he had a quiet uh, a t what, 10 points in that first half. I'm sorry, eight points at the end of the first half. And Massey pushes off Larvidane. Call for the foul. Every time it's looked like the Cowboys would make some type of a run, either you get a three ball or an emphatic dunk in one. Okafor's had one of each the last couple of minutes. Lions have found ways to keep the Cowboys at arm's length so far. Okafor on the bench. This has been a balanced effort overall by Southeastern. Larvidane hangs in the air. It's taken away by Francois. Yeah, that's another guy there. They got to get going too. Shoemate's got to get involved in the offensive end. With just two points, he had 21 yesterday in the double overtime win over UNO. Tough shot. Warren off the glass. He'll take it. His first three. <laughs> Those keeper just kind of threw his hand down. And said, "You got to be kidding." Counts just as much on the stat sheet. Caldwell followed up his own shot. Strange though, got hung up in the air. Francois altered it, led to the steal and the dunk by Lewis. And Francois remains down in the Cowboys' backcourt, and the whistle blows. That's the one that you you, you don't like to see. You know these guys are so athletic, so flexible. And highly trained. You, know, you and I doing something like that, they're hauling us off in, a, in, a gurney, in an ambulance. These young kids may bounce back here the next game or so. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to walk back to any locker room for a few days, that's for sure. Yeah, the Cowboys have held the Lions to 4 of 11 shooting this half, but Southeastern 5 of 5 from the stripe, and they've only given up two points off their halftime lead. Good defensive effort again by Lewis this time. Shot clock at 9, Southeastern still with the basketball. Yeah, that's what we talked about. You know, they had to pick it up on this part of the floor. Gordon scoreless. Had a fade over Shoemate. Here come the Cowboys looking to get it to within single figures. Scott down the baseline. Scores! And the deficit down to eight. He's, he's been fantastic. He, he has been exactly what the doctor has ordered. And how about that, David? The defensive effort, now it's an eight-point lead. It's an 11-3 Cowboys run, and actually they've also scored the last seven to get it to within eight. But now that's just their ninth team foul called, and the Lions will have free throws with every Cowboys defensive foul. Claire Gill will go to the line here. Colin Warren and Miles Lewis with three fouls apiece. Kellen Taylor as well. Clergio, 79% from the line. And one more coming. This is just his first free throw attempt. Last year, he was fourth in the nation in free throws made and attempted with 155 for 192. Misses his 55th free throw attempt of this season. Goes one for two on the trip. His Lions up nine. Smaller unit on the court now for the Cowboys. Taylor. Schumann hangs in the air, got the board, swapped by Hinton, but into the hands of Lewis. Schumann challenges Hinton again and scores. There you go. Two percent of their shots in the first half. Or have the Cowboys done something different defensively? I think they've changed it up defensively. I think they've really closed out on these shooters. And, and you don't see Burkhart. You, you, you don't see uh, Claire, Claire Joe uh, suit these open shots. And so that's led to some nice buckets on the other end. And I think it's a little bit of kind of the best of both worlds. Burkhart, first miss of the day. Gus Okafor has eight points for the Lions this half. The rest of Southeastern with seven. We're approaching 10 minutes to go. 
Aaron Feed. Scott was leaning to his left and couldn't control the pass. Burkhardt lost the basketball, taken away by Massey. Lewis, deficit down to five. That's a nice job by Miles Lewis, recognizing the moment in the game, had a smaller defender, he knew he could, and then his ability to draw contact and still get the bucket. He, he's just made those timely plays. He's been able to get his team a chance to get back in the game, and now they're down five. Okafor, left open from the wing. Massey tracks down the rebound, and then a foul on Burkhart. And Burkhart upset, running all the way to midcourt. Darren Jones tees him up. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Darren George is not one. <laughs> He's going to give you a little bit of leeway from time to time, but if you go the extra mile, he, he's going to get you. And they get Burkhart. He gets Burkhart on that one there. Zach Scott with the technical free throws. Eight of ten from the line this season. This again was 63-47 Lions with 14-23 to go. It's taken under five minutes for the Cowboys to come all the way back. And it'll be a one-possession game with a make here. 67-64, and it's Cowboys basketball. Well, they're, they're a little bit ahead of the schedule that I had for them. When they were down 13, 14 points, it was about, I would say, 13, 14 minutes. I said, well, in my mind, they can cut it in half by the seven-minute mark. Hey, it's anybody's game, but look what they've done now. It's 9.27 left in the game, and it's a three-point game. The momentum is clearly on the Cowboys' side now. Taylor, Lewis, one point game. I mean, that's just good basketball. You know, now you've got a defense that was all over the Cowboys, kind of standing around looking, and you've got cutters going to the basketball now to the rim, David, and the passes are there. They're knocking down these mid-range shots, these close-range shots. HBU rally, but too late yesterday. Got it to within two possessions. Here are the rally coming much earlier. We're just under nine minutes to go, and a throw away into the hands of Massey. To the rim. Charging call. Yeah, that's a good call. Good call. Claire Joe draws the charge. Yeah, and, and they're, they're so good at doing that, but I thought Massey, he didn't have the position he wanted. Maybe should have brought it out. Bring it out, get a good possession, but these guys are trying to attack. That's a perfect, perfect job there by Claire, Claire Joe to just hold his ground. Made sure he stayed outside that restricted area. Veteran move by the senior. Lion still with the lead. This is where you got to get the ball to Okafor. He, he is the guy to kind of settle things down. Way off the mark, called well. Hinton. Unable to follow. Shoemate the rebound and a foul. Third foul on Okafor. Yeah, you see a lot of traffic. You know, Hinton couldn't get it to go back down. There's Shoemate in there in the traffic. He's so good at getting those rebounds in traffic. And there's Okafor with a ticky tack type of foul. Lastly for the Cowboys, 10 to 8, five minutes in. They have the lead back. Massey's third field goal. How are the Lions going to respond now? They pulled off quite a bit. Their offense has gotten a little bit stagnant. The ball movement is not there as it once was. Caldwell stops the drought. There you go. There you go. Anytime you can get a shooter a spot, these shooters have got to pull the trigger, Dave. First field goal in five and a half minutes for Southeastern. It's still a 17-4 Cowboys run. They're down just two. Scott looks to answer and does. <laughs> 17 for the junior. <laughs> and that's one there. Coach Keeper is not going to like that. You got to step up and close out a shooter. And right immediately, he is going to the bench. Hinton hounded, saved, Okafor from the corner. Massey tips it out, but Eastman, the offensive board. Yes! That was beautiful. Come on, 
Lions take the lead back by one. A lot of times when you see a team have to expend so much energy to come back, they can suddenly lose that momentum, but there's so much time here. 6.30 to go. Oh. The 21 points, 13 boards, and the double overtime win over UNO yesterday. It's just at four points today. Second leading scorer for McNeese coming in, 56% from the line. Drains the first. Cowboys were down 12 at the break, despite shooting 61% from the floor. Well, they've continued that, 62% in the second half. But they've held Southeastern to 6 of 19 shooting since halftime and 2 of 7 from beyond the arc. That's Taylor and Gordon going after the basketball. And I believe a jump ball was called. Both of them, Henry Howard is going to rule, had possession as the ball goes out of bounds. So you look at the arrow and McNeese is going to get the ball back. It just keeps going your way. It continues to go your way. And I know you mentioned, you know, a lot of energy expend, extended to really, you know, get them back in the game. Sometimes you can ride that wave, David, and right now they're just making all the right moves. Miles Lewis. She even had it for a moment. Hinton knocked it away. Hinton remains on the floor with his four fouls. Here comes Southeastern and clears you. I think this is an important possession here for the Lions. I, I think they need to get the get their offense back into the rhythm that they have, get the spacing, get a good look at the rim. Good feed, though. Hinton been able to finish, yet fouled. It was Burkhart with the pass. Miles Lewis picks up his fourth. And that's what I'm talking about. Spread the floor. Chris pass, passes. If you've got a lane and Burkhart saw a lane, now you're a threat to this defense. Make them converge on you, dish it out, and hit and knock down the first of two here. It's now five of five from the line today, 74% coming in. Nine points for the senior from Boston, Massachusetts. Lewis goes to the bench with those four fouls, but I doubt he'll be out for long. And now Southeastern's taking the lead right back. Coach Aiken has uh, put Medley Bacon back to the game. So now they're they're a little bit bigger now. And that's going to be a matchup problem for the, a smaller Lions team. Be interesting to see how Medley Bacon can factor in to this flow of the game. Left open, Warren. Good box out by Oko for Medley Bacon, and it's Burkhardt coming away with the basketball. Good defense there by the Lions. Needed to get a couple of stops. Lergio quiet today, just five points. Gets the step on Scott and an offensive foul. Darren George calls it on Clergio. Yeah, you see here, watch that right arm just trying to clear the defender. He got a little bit of a hook. You see Scott, he said, yeah, he hooked me. He hooked me. Cowboys can take the lead with the three. Taylor finds Shoemate. Misfiring, and the rebound into the hands of Hinton. Yeah, that was a good look, too. He, he was almost too close for him to really realize that he might have could have tried to dunk the basketball, but tried to be delicate. And it hit the back of the iron. Yeah, we don't have layups as a stat today. But the Cowboys have missed many too many. Burkhardt steps back. His sixth three. Okay, okay, okay. And his first point of the half after 17 in the first. You got to stay on the ground if you're going to close out a shooter. You cannot fall for the pump fake. Burkhardt makes him pay again. Lions up five. Shoemate still looking to get things going. Can't get the roll again. You know, he was he was hitting those shots yesterday. Those were the types of shots they were money. Cowboys have just hit one of their last six after taking the lead. Hinton gets a step on Medley Bacon. Medley Bacon comes back to get the block. Big time block. Shoemate on the run. Medley Bacon. And out again for the Cowboys. And those shots that were falling for much of the game mentioned the over 60% shooting they've had throughout.
rally from 16 down here in the second half to make it a game. How difficult is it going to be for them to have enough to make another comeback here in the final 355? Yeah, it's going to be very difficult now because you, you got a feeling that the Lions kind of weathered the storm a little bit, and now they're starting to make some shots. That was a huge three by Burkhardt to give it you know, the five-point lead. Now you've got two more free throws here to make it a seven-point lead. But you got to keep playing this thing out. You got to keep that intensity level up. Try to attack the rim if you can. Massey got off balance. Hinton took it away to Okafor in the lead up to nine. That's big. That's big. Still a lot of time, but you, that's the last thing you needed to do is give them an easy lay in. It's an 11 to 1 run now, and the Lions have scored the last nine. Cowboys scoreless the last three minutes. The drought ends with the off-balance jumper by Lewis. Cowboys have work to do. You know, Lewis is sneaky good. He's got a nice mid-range jumper. Had a great game last night, too. Approaching three minutes remaining. Nichols, a and knee injury. We were told yesterday to be doubtful he'd play all week. We'll see just before tip. 81-74, the Lions lead. Shot clock approaching 10 and three minutes to go now. Hinton, after making the catch, shuffled his feet. It's an ill-advised turnover. Yeah, I thought that was a good timeout by Coach Keefer, too, because now these possessions really start to count. You know, you get under three minutes in the game, you want to make sure that you expend as much of the shot clock as you possibly can to still get a good shot at the end of it also. Taylor backs in on Hinton. No whistle, five-point game. Well, he can do that. That's a that's a that's a nice possession. Can they get another stop down here on this end? Boca for a hot second half of the basketball. Claire Joe finds Burkhart. Under 10 to shoot. Claire Joe. Burkhart the tip, but Lewis is gonna get to it first for McNeese. Two-possession game. Scott to cut it to two. Oh, the four chases down the board. Right, that was a really, really good look, too. He's handled in the corner and just gets it away in time. Hinton across the timeline with two minutes to go. Eastman got tripped up. A number of Cowboys with four fouls now includes Kellen Taylor. Roscoe Eastman has just played in the last four games for Southeastern, sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. This will be his first free throw attempt of the year. Kind of grabbed his hamstring just a little bit after that last exchange. And it's two free throws, Lions in the double bonus. In and out on the first. Ten points for Eastman today, career high in a Lion uniform. Missed them both. Two big misses right there. There's plenty of time. Cowboys don't have to rush for a shot. Two possession game, and we still have 150 to go. Taylor down the baseline. Three point game now. Oh, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Nice screen. He just kept going to the baseline. Nobody picked him up. Let's draw contact, too. 18 points, eight boards for Taylor. 90 seconds remain. There, Joe. Hinton had trouble with the pass and got it knocked away. In fact, he was on his knees. Zach Scott got his hand on the basketball and then picks up the steal. Zach Scott has done everything to what he can do to keep his team in this game with the chance to pull this thing out. Taylor lost it going up. Taking what they needed there. It was beautiful execution. Had Okafor back here by himself. Eastman instead, the inbounds to Hinton. One minute to go. Oka for a hot second half. You just want a quality shot right now. You, you got a three-point lead. Don't need to put up anything if, if it's not a clear look. No matter if it's a three, no matter if it's two. You just want a good, clean shot. Seven to shoot. Claire Joe to the rim, and an offensive foul. He extended his arm on the drive. Henry Howard calls the foul on Clergio. And that's the second one 
by Claire Joe in the last few minutes of this game. And there it is again, and with this time with the left arm. Chance to tie with a three. Taylor is your option to score a quick two if you can. Yeah, Taylor is not a good three-point shooter, but very good around the rim. Miles Lewis trying to drive in on Burkhart. They look for the quick two. Hinson comes away with a block. Uncle Four fouled. Hinton has been on the floor with four fouls the last six and a half minutes. He comes away with the biggest defensive play of the game. Well, he did it beautifully. He goes straight up, David. That's the thing. He didn't go hack down on the offensive player. He goes straight up in the air with that leaping ability and gets the block. And he gets a hug from his coach, too, after that one. Gus Okafor, 18 points, make it 19. Nine rebounds, 65% from the line. That was a big first make, makes it a two possession game with 25 seconds to go. He didn't take any time. Confident two free throws for the junior. Gonna make a quick decision here. Don't need to foul if you don't mind. Massey for three. Actually, that's a two off the mark. They'll get another chance. 10 seconds to go. Taylor. Another chance coming, but the clock winding down. That way off. Scott, the follow off the mark. 